Welcome back. You're still watching the break now. We took a break, but the conversation continued. There are certain things they have said. I wish they could say them on air. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I can't tell you what they are. Now, to the conversation about the reconstitution of IBC, we know that uh, the tribunal of Agri Muchelule concluded hearings yesterday, and uh, they have retired to go and write uh, their report and make recommendations to the president on whether to remove Irene Masit or retain her based on whether the accusations meet the threshold of removal. At the same time, today is day seven since the declaration of um, vacancies in the IABC, and therefore it means that the selection panel should be constituted after today. The Parliamentary Service Commission and the Public Service Commission, we still don't know who they are recommending to the selection panel. Uh, but uh, let me begin with you, Honorable Mbui, because you have persistently said that you're not going to take part and in fact, we understand that that is not going to happen. But what is the strategy? Because the process has to kick off anyway, and the process of seeking new commissioners after the selection panel has been gazetted will happen. So what role will you play at what time? Because Kenyans expect you to oversight uh, whatever is happening. Yeah, some, some the, the fact is that uh, we, we are really, really concerned because, you see, an electoral body is uh, meant to be completely impartial mm -hmm. so that uh, as we go to elections, the most important uh, you know, aspect of elections is fairness and you know, freedom. So we, we always say that elections must be free and fair. And for that impartiality to exist and the, even the selection panel that we're coming up with must be able to put in place commissioners that are seen to be impartial. You saw the last election that uh, clearly the, every, even a child of uh, nursery school could see that uh, the, 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 the commissioners were not impartial. Three commissioners were aligned on one side and four commissioners on the other side. So I, clearly that tells us that we need to be very careful about selecting our commissioners. So when we see interference in the selection panel where there are changes being made that uh, in our opinion do not, uh, are not going to improve uh, you know, the, the, the kind of commission we have in the future, then we get concerned. And you know, so that's, that's why we have stated that uh, as Azimio, we are not giving in. Uh, we are not giving names for anyone to go and participate in a, in, a, in, a, in an exercise which we believe, even from the get-go, is already you know is already skewed against us. Because at the end of the day, the likelihood is that there will be uh, you know we'll only have one com one person in that selection panel that will be leaning towards our side. But I want to just say that I think Kenya Kwanza needs to understand because I feel that their thinking is really warped. Kenya does not belong to them. You know, Kenya is an independent country. All of us are, are part of this country. Mm -hmm. And Kenya Kwanza must realize that, that what they have managed to get now is a reins of power so that they can steer the country to greater height of, uh, heights of prosperity. Mm -hmm. But what they have done is that uh, they're taking control and trying to turn Kenya into a Kenya Kwanza state. Because look, even the, even the, even the public service, for the first time, we've seen politicians becoming PSs. How do you encourage the public service uh, people that have gone into public service as a career to go up the ladder? Because if you're going to bring in outsiders to come and become their bosses, we understand the minister and the CS rather can come from well, outside. Says that but why? The public service commission is doing its work independently. No, it's not. It's not. That's why we have all those commi all, all those PSs that were appointed that have obviously you know aligned to Kenya Kwanza. Some uh, go and go and. Check Check the record of the people that have been appointed as uh, PSs. You will notice that uh, everywhere where there was uh, there is a CS from uh, anywhere outside Rift Valley, they have been given a, a PS that is from Rift Valley. Clearly, you can you cannot tell me that it was a coincidence that uh, you know Rift Valley uh, people happen to be the best people in becoming PSs in the Republic of Kenya. You know, clearly, I think the Kenya Kwanza government has lost the script uh, and and. The the DP is very good because the DP is telling us the real truth that their manifesto is to control the country and, and, and exclude everyone else. So, they are so, not so, uniting so, the country and that's what the, any so, head of state Honorable must Mbaya. be the symbol of unity. I, I, your colleague was here yesterday, Senator Manzo, and he was talking about keeping off uh, from the recruitment process. But I'm just wondering, so a commission will still be put in place based on the law and yeah. there will be an election in 2027. Uh, some, some believe you me, the, that, that truth is the one we, we do not want. That is the reason why you find us anywhere in the streets shouting from the rooftops to tell this government, please stop. 
let us sit at the table, let us agree on the future. Because How do you stop the a future... process that is guided by law? Today is day seven. The, the list has to be taken to the president of the selection. You know, in, in, Sam, let me tell you, uh, if you remember in uh, 2017, the, the reason why the former president Uhuru had to shake hands with Raila is because he refused to participate in the second election. And, and the turnout was a, a very paltry number. And so what happened is that he realized he didn't really have the mandate proper. He, that's why he had to reach out and that's why they had to work together. Let me tell you, uh, if we do not participate in the next election, whoever wins will not, have the, will not have the moral authority to run the country. And that is what we are saying. We are saying they must sit, we must sit at the table and agree on our way forward. So even if they move on with this process, for us, if we don't participate, then we don't give it legitimacy. That is exactly what we will do. We don't believe it's legitimate. It might be legal, but we don't feel the legitimacy of this process. And that's why we are keeping off. Okay. Because we do not want a commission like the one we had before. Honorable Kerry, what is your take? Because a commission is too important for the country. And if there are already seeds of discord being planted even before the constitution of that commission, it is worrying. So what do you think should be the solution out of this, even as the country uh, follows the law as it is? The nature of politics is that people will have very strong feelings about so many things. And how this is managed is by having a law. And uh, how we come up with a law mm -hmm. is very well guided in our, in our constitution, uh, attendant laws, even standing orders of parliament that uh, generates this law. How to come up with a law is already there. Now, as we sit uh, mm -hmm. right now, Sam, mm -hmm. the law is that there shall be a, a, a body that shall nominate commissioners to the IEBC. Right. These bodies are well listed. Uh, I might not be exhaustive in the list. The LSK is going to be part of this. The interreligious parties, the inter-parties, uh, LIAZO, uh, PSC, the, the, the PSC <coughs> being public service, the parliamentary service commission, right. are the ones who are supposed to go and, uh, and, and give two names uh, suggested for chairman and maybe eight names suggested for the four positions. Mm -hmm. And this is from the, the list from which the president will choose his people. Right. So what you are listening <coughs> to some from the honorable the Bui, what you are listening to is, no. uh, is, is, is a script on mean, how... Do you, as mean, mean, yes? do you mean his people or commissioners? Uh, who? who? You said the president to pick his people from the to list. Of pick, yeah. To pick people from this uh, from this list. Mm -hmm. To pick people from the list of uh, okay. maybe eight uh, appointees, uh, to, uh, two nominees for chairman. Uh, he gets one chairman from the eight. He picks uh, four from which become commissioners to the mm -hmm. positions that are, are, are open. Mm -hmm. What I was saying, Sam, is that listening to the honourable Mbui, you are listening to a script on how Azimio loses elections long before elections have happened. So what you will be hearing in 2033 is crying that we were never involved. This one is illegitimate because we were never involved. However, how you get involved is through the processes that are stipulated by the law. Sam, mm -hmm. the fact that uh, Azimio did not participate in the, in the, in the, in the follow-up election in 2017 did not stop Uhuru Kenyatta from being the legally elected legitimate president of Kenya. It won't matter how loud you shout from the streets that uh, you do not recognize the presidency of William <coughs> Ruto. The fact is that by law, the president of the country today is William Samoy Arap Ruto. So the best way is for Azimio to just get on board, follow the law as it, has, as it stipulates. And some, let me tell you, mm -hmm. some of these laws you're hearing Azimio saying they will not comply with, they were passing them by force in the last parliament. Some, some of us were standing up, especially when we were passing the election laws. Right. I remember I, I left Bunge that evening at around 3.30 in the a.m., trying to argue that there is a way that we should not take this country uh, down that route. And that was the day we were, we were debating the election laws. But my, that was not my point. My point is, uh, Sam, the, 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 the body that uh, is going to be nominating uh, uh, the, or shortlisting for, for IEBC is constitutionally mandated to do so by law 
laws that were passed by none other than some of the gentlemen you're seeing here, including the Honorable Mbui. They say uh, they were ignored in the, re in yes. the recommendations. Yeah. They say they were ignored in the recommendations. But you see, Sam, when a process is moving forward, it doesn't mean that everything that I suggest as John Kerry has to be onboarded for it to be legitimate. That's why we go through processes. So if you had one recommendation that was adopted and another that was not adopted, it depends on <coughs> the merit of the recommendation that you made. So if the recommendation is not constitutional is, or is not legally acceptable, right. it doesn't mean that now you forfeit the process just because you, you, your recommendation was not onboarded. Now, finally, um, the Justice Muchalule uh, inquiry, mm -hmm. and I don't want to 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 to, to be to be delving into matters that are before a court. This is exactly what we had said needs to happen. Procedural um, uh, procedural um, processes mm -hmm. that allow for either the admission or the omission of an individual or the or the or the kicking out of someone from a constitutional commission. Mm -hmm. It has to go through the processes that are required. So even the Cherera Four, mm -hmm. if they really uh, were serious about what they were saying, if they really meant what they were saying, mm -hmm. they should have gone through such a process so that they are able to bring to light for Kenyans to see what it is that they were arguing about and what it is that uh, led to their breaking away from the main commission to go and form a parallel commission that could not even enumerate numbers. They could not even put figures together. These are people who are tasked with the mega role of enumerating, telling figures for an election. They could not even put figures together, uh, some. So it tells you that the process that we had undergone in forming the last commission was very faulty. This parliament, the 13th parliament, decided to remedy the situation, come up with a body that mm -hmm. is widely acceptable. Okay. And, and that's how we ended up uh, incorporating public service, parliamentary service, inter-party liaison committee, the LSK, the inter-religious um, uh, bodies, so that we have a very all-inclusive processes <coughs> in picking up commissioners. Right. Uh, Honorable Soro, you're in the parliamentary leadership. Um, I would assume that you know who the nominees to the uh, panel ah, from the Parliamentary Service Commission at least. Mm. Who are they? Holy horses, Sam. It is the final day. This is the seventh day. And um, we are yet to hear from uh, the minority side uh, on their nominee. But I, I hope their threats are just hot air. Uh, they would uh, participate in... Um, You're listening to the deputy minority. Uh, I, I really just hope this is just to please uh, a few of um, you know their supporters on national TV this morning, but I, and I hope the name should be will be submitted today mm -hmm. uh, from the side. But let me say this: Do you have a name for the majority side? Uh, yes, yes, oh, uh, yes, that is true. And, but no, we wouldn't preempt. Uh, that is the work now of the Parliamentary Service Commission, <laughs> okay. which I actually do not see it. I have no privilege of sitting in that. Uh, how has that name arrived at? You see, Kenya Kwanzaa is a consultative, you know, uh, side of the political divide. Uh, we really consult <laughs> everything. So, <laughs> but let me say this, uh, Sam. I wanted to to to, to advise uh, my colleague, uh, and of course, it's not in, a, in my place to advise an, uh, an opponent uh, for now, Honorable Bumbui, that elections are won in the ballot and through convincing people. You know, you need to go out and learn previous. You see, in the last election... You know, you haven't answered my question. Eh? The, the Kenya Kwanzaa, because I've just said... <laughs> that, that I I've asked you, how was the name arrived at? <laughs> but I've said, you'll hear from the Parliamentary Service Commission. It is actually a preserve of the Parliamentary Service Commission. I may be having an idea. Parliamentary I may be Service wrong Commission does right. not know how Kenya Kwanzaa arrived at the name. But that's what I'm saying. I may be right or wrong. It could be imaginary. I gave my opinion too. I was asked of my opinion. And that is why I'm imagining my opinion counted. So uh, let's allow the Parliamentary Service Commission to, to, to do their work. But there's some point I wanted to say first to Honorable Mbui and everyone. Mm -hmm. Kenyans need to understand why Azimio is complaining, what their imaginations are. Previously, the selection panel for the IEBC had four you know, uh, positions to appoint to the selection panel. What is being proposed by this 
you know, different committees or different commissions, mm -hmm. is a selection panel which is going to advertise, you know, to the public with the list of requirements for members of the public to apply, whoever that wants to sit in the commission. So what we are discussing here and debating and fighting over is actually a selection panel and the composition of the selection panel. Previously, it was the Parliamentary Service Commission had four positions of the selection panel. Right. So what then it meant, the minority would appoint two and the majority would appoint two. Then what happens to the small parties? Who are, not in the parliamentary, who are not parliamentary groups. What happens to small parties like the PPK? What, they have MCAs, but they do not have members of parliament. What happens to them? You know, they had no say on who sits in the selection panel for the IBC. So what uh, we decided to do as parliament, we brought an amendment to have these two positions uh, you know, given to her, the, the, one position goes to the uh, political liaison, uh, uh, you know, the liaison um, of the, of the political parties, which has already been filled yep. uh, so far. Mm -hmm. They couldn't have had that opportunity as the smaller parties to sit in that selection uh, panel. But now they have an opportunity. But as Mio is saying, we want to be all inclusive, but we do not want small parties. You know, Just that is suspicion. why we want to be parliamentary. Just suspicion, at least I heard from Senator Manzo, is that um, your coalition is going to infiltrate and uh, determine who is elected by these other institutions. Like IRCK. Like it, it, is, it is imaginary. You see, the, it's, it's imagination. Mm -hmm. The interreligious uh, organization, per se, mm -hmm. is independent. In any case, by the way, Kenya Kwanza took over government the other day. These people had instruments of power the other day. I mean, really, even learning the ropes within government or within the, these commissions and everything will take a bit of some time. And by the way, what is with this thing imaginary of control of IBC when all these people had what to call deep state and everything and control of police and everything and they still lost elections? The point is this, that these are independent. The, imagina the imagination that we control the church, we control, uh, Kenya Kwanza controls the, 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 we con the, the Islamic faith, Kenya Kwanza controls uh, the political parties, uh, the, small, the other liaison thing, Kenya Kwanza controls LSK. I mean, really, they simply imagining that if whatever, and by the way, what the selection panel is doing is what we passed in the National Assembly, okay. where Honorable Robert Mbui sits. You, I was here in this panel mm. when we, di we were discussing about who is the majority and who is the minority. Right. And they say they have numbers and they could pass everything. We were in the National Assembly together with them as we were passing the amendments. By the way, they went through public participation. We didn't even see anybody challenging that. The entire process was on. Nobody went to court for an injunction. If we, you know, really, what Azimio is doing is the same mistake, doing the same mistake mm -hmm. every day and expecting different <clears throat> results. They simply have lost focus. Go to the public and campaign and tell people vote for us. <clears throat> Whether it is Robert Mui's IBC chair or not, if the public do not want you, they do not want you. By the way, this is simply a selection panel. I'll advise them, propose the name, let the selection panel advertise the job vacancies available, let people apply, tell several of the, their supporters to apply for such a position. You know, tell several people. In fact, I'll advise that they tell uh, Robert Mbui applies for such a position, maybe he qualifies, so that at least we see whether he'll be shortlisted. Yeah, he doesn't qualify, he's been I'm in politics. Not a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. A commissioner, you don't need to be. You don't need a to be a lawyer, but, but, but you don't some. qualify because you are inactive. Uh, yeah. Sam, you know, uh, listening to my friend Osoro here, uh, first he said, you know, elections are won when you convince the people. Let me tell you. The most important uh, part of elections is a person who counts the votes. So if you get that wrong, it doesn't matter how much uh, the people love you and how much they vote for you. That's why every, every election cycle, there's so many petitions out there for MCAs, for MPs. You've seen even MCAs have been thrown out of office because of uh, petitions. Uh, you saw last election, last general election, not the, last, not the immediate one, the immediate former election, uh, the, 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 the nullification of the presidential election. So, I mean, the, the, that body called the IBC is critical. And that's why we are saying that, uh, and you, you know, from, the, from deep in the heart, the mouth speaks. And the Honorable KJ here just said it. He said, you know, the president is going to pick his people. And he was asked by some, what do you mean? 
from deep in the heart of the mouth speaks that the president will pick his people so that they can run his but, IDC. But he corrected himself. He corrected himself, but the, from deep in the heart, the mouth had spoken. No, but, but he's not the president. <laughs> it, it is... <laughs> Now, anyway, historically, historically, you know, the journey we've traveled as a country. You remember when we started the inter-parties uh, parliamentary group so that we can be able to discuss matters of election? I think that's what is lacking this time. Our problem is that we are not discussing, we are not sharing, we are not in agreement. And I think if we go into an election where we are not in agreement about constituting the body that does the selection of the IBC commissioners, already we are starting off so with the wrong footing. speaking to each other? That's why we are not, we are not, because we, why, why were they changing? Why were they changing? The law. I'm asking, why, we had no why, problem with it. During the pl parliamentary leadership, yes. your colleague in that, why aren't you speaking to each other if all these issues are coming to you? Because uh, they are not listening to us. We are speaking and they are not listening to us. We have to sit down and agree. Let's come up with a team that we know is fair. Let's come up with a team. In fact, let me tell you, did let me tell you some, the, most, the yeah. best thing. Eh? Yeah. If it were possible, because Kenya is, uh, has got two major co uh, you know, coalitions. Eh? We've got the Kenya Kwanzaa and we've got the Azimio. If there was going to be a selection panel, half of that uh, selection panel should have been given out by Azimio and the other half from Kenya Kwanzaa. That's what we call fairness. Then we go into, 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 the, into the IBC. Make sure by the time they are selecting the IBC... Is that the political dominance that the High Court was trying to cure? Mm. Mm -hmm. Through the Okium Tata case, by the way. Let me, let, me tell, let me tell you, at the end of the day, if we have a commission that is skewed to one side, clearly, Sam, you know what will happen. They will put their own people, so, so, they will put their own commissioners, and the next election will already be as good as done. And that's our concern. So we don't want to participate in an election that is already pre-rigged. We know that this team is going to procure the, 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 you know, all the apparatus for running the election. They're in charge of everything, the servers, the computers, and everything. We don't want to go into an election with people that we do not trust. And so we Aden, do not trust let, Kenya Kwanza. Let me ask you, Horabu Mboye, how did Aden Duale and John Badi work in the last parliament? Uh, we, we, I, I, I'm not very sure exactly what you ask with your question. I'm asking because you told me. I was a deputy, a deputy leader. I was, I was, I was John Buddy's deputy. And you told me that this time round they are not listening to you. And I'm asking you, the majority leader that time and the minority leader, how did they work in parliament? And I'm singling out Adendu Allen John Buddy. Uh, I'm, I'm not very sure what the question is, but we, we, we did consult in, in, on a number of things and, and some of the cases we disagreed totally. And that's why even whenever we had uh, those cases that we felt that uh, were very unfair for the people, we walked out and left. Even this process, we also walked out. This is what I'm asking. Yes. Because you're saying that the reason why you're not able to talk about these issues at the parliamentary leadership level is because they are not listening to you. Yes, they are not. And I am asking, because there was John Buddy and there was Aden Duale, how did they work in the previous parliament? We also had difficulties, some, even in the previous parliament, but there was a lot more consultation. I will tell you that uh, the Honorable uh, Aden Duale was a lot more consultative, but there was also a lot of things that they pushed through and which we, we believe. Uh, in fact, that's why you saw in some of the cases uh, last parliament, we even got into fist fights in the House because we felt that some of these things needed further consultation, okay. further discussion, further debate. And, but then, you know, the, the, the truth is, what, what is happening, and this is where the problem is, Sam, mm -hmm. if, if the people who are elected in Azimio were still working to, with, with Azimio and the ones elected in Kenya Kwanzaa would be able to have a competition and would be able to debate and agree. But what is happening is that uh, members of our team have been procured and taken to the other side. So it's very difficult for us to pass anything and to fight in that house because already but the agenda of Kenya Kwanzaa is to try and send us back to and, a single party and, and, democracy. And from your assessment, what is the bigger problem? Is it those that are coming for your members or yourselves? In no, the bigger problem is those that are coming for our members because I think they do not understand that we have to have democracy and fair democracy for the country. I think that's my <laughs> some, opinion. Uh, some some, some had said yes. here earlier yeah. in a show earlier and I remember I was challenged by someone who was from the Azimio side. And at that time, what I was saying is that very soon you shall see a stampede of people running away, actually breaking away from the Azimio coalition. <laughs> that was before the elections. And I was saying that Azimio coalition was formed out of intimidation, yeah. coercion, threats, 
and many other things that you cannot imagine. These people were imprisoned. Honorable Mbui might not be imprisoned in Azimio, but let me tell you, he might have been either the captor or a captive in that, uh, <laughs> in that setup. And the people who had been held captive are now running away from Azimio because now they've realized with the freedom available, DCI will no longer come to you because of your political stand. KRA will not intimidate you because of your political stand. The people you are seeing walking out of Vazimio are doing it out of their own volition, uh, some. Some of them are the ones coming with the confessions. That's how we are getting to know how the economy got to be where it is, what was happening uh -huh. in the dying minutes of the last administration. These are people who have realized they cannot be accommodated in a place where one party has been conning Honorable Mbui's party for three election cycles. How else can you explain the, 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 the whatever, the, what do you call it? Where uh, an individual becomes so fond and, uh, and attached to their captor, like the situation that uh, Waipa has found itself. Even political parties' monies have been a problem. They are never dispersed to Waipa in time if they are ever dispersed <laughs> by the coalition that they have been in, in different names. First it was COD, then it went on to become NASA, now it has become Azimio. They are still being held captive. So, Chairman, uh, uh, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Some, the I'm truth of the matter, the, the, the truth of the matter is, Azimio was a very unholy alliance. It was an alliance that no one today wants to be uh, associated with. These people uh -huh. are not being, uh, are not being coerced out of Azimio. Mm. They're actually doing it out of their own volition. But what I wanted to say, uh, Sam, <laughs> and, uh, and and I wanted this to be the point that we note out of this, is that you can already see where Azimio will be in 2032. This is how they end up mm -hmm. with no agents in polling centers. This is how they end up with no telling, uh, sec no, with no telling uh, uh, secretaries at BOMAS. This is how they end up mm -hmm. complaining that an election was stolen, that servers should be opened. Well, the server was opened at the polling center where he cast the ballot. In the last election, where you cast your ballot, okay. when it is announced, that is uploaded to a server that is open directly and immediately. So the Honorable Mbui needs to understand that there are processes leading up to an election. Okay. If you do not follow the processes, you end up losing an election, and you will end up now trying to convince Kenyans to go to the streets, Kenyans who are not keen, All right. because the, the, the ploy has failed. I, I hear you, even though his party leader over the weekend said that uh, Waipa is committed to the Azimio coalition and the cause, and they support the protest uh, meetings that we've been seeing across the country. Um, if you call me chairman again,